Columbia Broadcasting System presents Dilamax Let's Pretender. <laughs> Fairy tales are calling. Enchanted voices are ready to carry you far out beyond the land of reality. So come on, young and old. Drop the cares of the day for a little while and join us in that ageless game of Let's Pretend. Youngsters, come on in. Why, thank you, Mr. Conover. And just what do we do today, Gwen? Well, we have sort of a triple mission today. Explain yourself, Miss Secretary. Well, first we want to acknowledge a letter from Garden City, Michigan, and salute a brave little girl who's sick in bed right now. And that salute goes to all the other listeners of Let's Pretend who are shut into the present. We're glad to know our program brings happiness to you. And thank you for telling us. That's the first mission. What's the second? Well, the second is another letter, this one in turn, asking for a special story, which is Gigi and the Magic Ring. That's a good story, so why not? Well, the story is settled. Uh, what's the third mission? Oh, well, this one kills me. <laughs> Listen to the postscript of this letter. A long time ago, while I was listening to you, there was a funny sound, and somebody said that was Nala Mac hitting the ceiling. <laughs> I laughed and laughed because I thought it was so funny. Do you think she'd do it again for me? <laughs> what do we do now? Well, Pat, we walk right up to the mic and ask her. Uh, who'll do it? I said the sparrow was my bow and arrow. Well. <laughs> oh, Miss Mack, you who? Would you mind hitting the ceiling? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Miss Mack. Well, now that she's back, let's get on with the regular business, hmm? Bill Lipton, suppose you say how we'll travel today. Well, I think our engineer, Fred Hendrickson, has made a very good suggestion. Oh, let's have it. He said, let's pretend to be popcorn and pop our way. Oh, okay, let's buy that. All right, the story is Gigi and the Magic Ring, and here we go. Sound department, turn on the heat. Pour in the popcorn. Now then, commence. <laughs> <laughs> Why must you go out into the world? Well, why not, little mother? What is there here for me? Well, the farm for you to till. Me, your mother. And better. But little mother, I want to see things. I want to have adventure, meet people. And who wants to be a farmer? A commonplace farmer. No job is commonplace if you do it well. And better loves you, Gigi. You know she does. I hope she doesn't, mother. That is sweet, but I want a beautiful girl for my wife. That is just a plain little country maid. Oh, Gigi, you have a great deal to learn. If you think beauty alone or riches make happiness, you'll find out how wrong you are. You may be right, little mother, but I must find out for myself. And don't you worry. I'll make my fortune and come back, and you'll be the richest lady in the village. You'll see. <laughs> Very well, Gigi. I'll say no more. Hello. Shh. He's better. Tell her gently, Gigi. Anybody home? Come in, better. Hello, Mother. Hello, Better. Why, Gigi, you're not in your work clothes. Has, has something happened? Oh, yes, Better. You see, I'm going away. Oh, Gigi, not far, surely. Yes, Better, I'm afraid so. You see, dear little friend, I'm tired of farming, and I've decided to go out into the world to seek my fortune. Mother, tell me it isn't true. He, he's joking, isn't he? No, little Better. He's going today. Now. Oh, Gigi... How can I, I mean, we, go on without you? Oh, of course you can. You'll be fine. I'll come back and, oh, and uh, while I'm gone, better, will you do something for me? Oh, anything, Gigi. Look after my little mother for me, will you? Of course I shall. She's always been a real mother to me. I'll take care of her, I promise you. Oh, thank you. Now if I'm to reach the next village by night, I must start. Goodbye, little better. Goodbye, Gigi. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, mother darling. Don't worry about me. I shall return someday with riches and fine gifts for you both. My daily prayer will be that you find wisdom and appreciation of the worthwhile things of life, Gigi. And mark my words, son, they don't always come with wealth. Goodbye. 
Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Gigi. Noisy people. Why don't you help me carry this jar of oil? Help me a lot more than you're barking. <coughs> Confound you, tabby cat. Get from under my feet. Do you want me to trip and spill all the oil? <coughs> Hello there, old lady. Be quiet, Tag Long. Good morning, young fella. Hey, old lady. That oil jar is too big for you to carry. Let me help you. Oh, thank you, stranger. You are kind to an old woman. No, not at all. I happen to have a mother a long way from here. I wouldn't like to think of her having to carry such a heavy load. Now, uh, which way do we go? I live right here, sir. It's just another step. Oh, too bad I didn't come along sooner. We'll go in this way. Come in, please. Just put it here by the stove. Oh, very well. Get out of the way, Tabby. <coughs> Quiet, Tag Long. Uh, there you are. Where are you bound for, youngster? And what's your name? My name is Gigi. And I'm out to seek my fortune, old lady. To see the world. I see. Well, may good luck go with you. It's a place of wonders, to be sure. But it can be very lonely, too. Have you no companions? No, that is, not in this country. Well, then, what do you say to taking my dog, Tabby Cat, along with you? They're pretty good company and useful, too, mayhap. Would you like them? Oh, that's kind of you, and why not? But don't you mind giving them up? I like you, youngster. You went out of your way to do a good turn for me. I'm happy to be able to do one for you. And here... Here's something else for you. A ring, little lady? Well, thank you very much, but I don't need that. You will need this one, Gigi, because, you see, it's a magic ring. Magic? In what way? Put it on your finger. Never take it off day or night. And when you want something, simply turn the ring on your finger. Make your wish, and it will come true. Oh, little lady, this is indeed a gift. Oh, but should I take it? You, you, you might need it yourself. Not I. Take it. You've been kind to me. I want you to have it. Remember, wear it day and night, and whatever you wish shall be granted. Oh, a thousand thanks. Now I think I'd better be moving. Come on, tag along. And you too, Tabby Cat. <coughs> Who knows what we shall discover out in the great big world? Who indeed but you, Gigi? You will find plenty I want. <laughs> I'm ready for it. You'll certainly be company at any rate. Well, thank you again, old lady. And health and good fortune to you. And to you, Gigi. You'll need it, my friend. <coughs> funny little fellows. It's too dark to go farther tonight. This wood may go on for miles. We have no idea where we are. But now look, here's a sheltered little corner. And the ground is soft with pine needles. Let's cuddle down here together and keep each other warm. What do you say, huh? <coughs> well, that's all clear then. Uh, oh, my hands are cold. And my new ring is pretty tight. Maybe I ought to turn it. Well, at last, well, Master. I thought you'd never turn well, it. What in the world has happened, Tagalong? As soon as you turn the magic ring, both of us can speak with you, Master. We were powerless until you turned it. Why didn't you think of it before? Well, upon my soul, this is indeed a magic ring. I'd completely forgotten about it. What great good luck. I didn't realize how lonely I was. It's mighty nice to have someone to talk to. Oh, please, Master. I'm very hungry. Yes, and I. May we have something to eat? Now, after all, Tagalong, where can I get it? I'm starved myself, but we can't eat pine needles. Make your wish and turn the ring on your finger, Master. Oh, how stupid of me. Thank you, Tabby Cat. Hey, here we go. Food, food, and more food. With cream for Tabby Cat and a big juicy bone for Tagalong. Hi, hi. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm, that smells good. It looks good, too. Oh, what a lucky day for me. Come along, my little friends. Here is food fit for the gods. Eat your fill, and then off to slumberland we go. And tomorrow... Ah, uh, who knows what tomorrow and the magic ring will bring.
wake up. The sun is high in the heavens, Master Gigi. Wake up. Huh? What? So it is. Oh, how I slept. Uh, no, Tabby. Where are we? I don't know what country, Master Gigi. Oh. But look there, ahead. Through the clearing. A splendid castle. Oh. Why, so it is. Oh. And listen. I hear a voice. Where does it come from? My eyes are sharper at night. I can't see. Oh, I can. It's a girl. She's in the upper window. There to your right, Master Gigi. Oh. Yes, I see her. Oh, my word, what a beautiful princess. Oh, she's the loveliest woman I've ever seen in my life. She is beautiful, Master. Now I know why I had to go out into the world. It was to find this lovely lady and win her heart. But how? You have the magic ring, Gigi. You can have as fine a castle as that one, Master. Why, of course, the ring. So be it. No sooner said than wished. I want a white marble castle with emerald towers studded jewels, a hundred beautiful rooms, grounds filled with flowers and fountains that pour forth perfume, rich clothes and a full purse for myself, servants, soldiers, everything my lovely princess could want. Magic ring, I command you. <laughs> It is indeed. And now come along, little friends. In we go to our new home. And there we shall await a call from our neighbors across the way. Hello, servants of Gigi's castle. Attend me. This way, Prince Gigi. Your servants await your pleasure, Prince Gigi. Welcome, Prince Gigi. My adventure begins. Princess of my heart, come to me soon. <laughs> Tabby Cat, come in. Come in, Tagalong. Have you heard the news, Master? About my neighbors, you mean? They sent messengers early this morning to say they'd call today if convenient. You knew that? Oh, Tabby, I've scarcely slept for a week just waiting for this day. And to think my lovely princess will be here in my castle today. Master. Oh, yes, Tagalong? What's troubling you, little friend? Please don't think me impertinent or rude, but may I offer a bit of advice? You may offer it. Uh, I beg of you, be cautious. You don't know these people. They may not be all you expect. Oh, nonsense. These are people of royalty tag along. They're not ordinary folk. And my princess, a lovely face like hers, could only be the outward expression of a beautiful soul. I know you're thinking of my welfare, but, old fellow, your advice isn't necessary. I hope you're right. Oh, of course I am. Lord and Lady Delonia. Lady Maillarda. Come, Tabby, this is no place for us just now. Come. Enter my guests, and welcome. Ah, uh, Prince Gigi, we hope we're not intruding. We realize that you've had very little time in which to settle here, but neighbors are so few in this part of the country that we lost no time in presenting ourselves. I am honored, Lord Delonia. My wife, Prince Gigi. How do you do, Prince Gigi? <laughs> Madame? My daughter, the Lady Maliarda. I am most happy, Lady Maliarda. Prince Gigi, I must confess that I, for one, could scarcely wait to make your acquaintance and... And to visit this beautiful castle, which until this moment has been incomplete, Lady Maliarda. Oh, thank you. Oh, w w w will you sit here, madame? Thank uh, you. Lord Delonia, I think you'll find that lounge comfortable. Ah, uh, yes. Then you must sit here by me, Prince Gigi. Oh, with great happiness. I hope that you'd choose this place because from here you can see the fountain and its diamond spray. Oh, how perfectly beautiful. Oh, do you like it? I wished for it just for you. What? Uh, I mean, I, uh, the fountain is... It... I think I know what you mean. And look, father and mother, the fruit trees in the courtyard. They're jeweled. Oh, the fruit is solid jewel. Oh, yes, would you like some? Oh, yes, do. I'll get it for you myself. It won't take a moment. What did I tell you, Maliara? He's madly in love with you right now. Of course he is. Any fool could see it, and that's what he is. One look at his face and you know every thought. Young lady, if you play your cards right, he'll propose to you today. You don't have to tell me that. He's going to be very useful to us. We must find out how he came by all this wealth. And here he comes. Oh, it is the most beautiful castle. Oh, there you are, enough for everyone. Oh. Help yourself. <laughs> uh, quite extraordinary. And what flavor. Lady Maliarda, here's a golden pear for you. See, the stem is emerald, lovely lady. Oh, 
ask your pardon, but you are just that. Oh, Prince, I do so want you to think me lovely. Oh, there hasn't been a doubt of it since I saw you. Why, that was what made me wish for this castle, for everything. Just that I might be near you. And that is all you have to do, Prince? Just wish for things? Oh, yes. You see, here on my finger is a magic ring. I've only to turn it, make my wish, and instantly it comes true. Most extraordinary. Oh, wonderful. The most remarkable gift I've ever heard of. And, uh, do you wear this magic ring always, Prince Gigi? Oh, yes. If that was understood. I promised faithfully, night and day, waking or sleeping, I would not remove it from my finger. I see. And, uh, what was your dearest wish of all, Prince Gigi? Surely that must come true, too. That one rests with someone else. The loveliest lady in all the land. But, of course, I wouldn't resort to the ring for that wish. The lady's heart must be given freely and of her own accord. A gracious remark, Prince Gigi. Lady Delonia, let us go out on the terrace. Hmm? I must get a closer view of the diamond fountain. Oh, I was longing to see it, too. Do you mind, Prince Gigi? Oh, no, not at all. I'm glad they left us alone. You were saying, Prince Gigi? Oh, my sweet, it is so soon to speak of it, and yet I've dreamed of nothing else since I first saw you. I adore you, Maliarda. How oh, could you ever learn to love such an unworthy fellow? I'd give my life for you. Gigi, my beloved, for years I've dreamed of a prince who'd someday come to me, and we'd look into each other's eyes and know the meaning of a beautiful and lasting love. And the prince, beloved? The prince, my dear, is you. Maliarda... You do love me? You do? With all my heart, Gigi. Oh, I'm the happiest man in the world. Come, let us call your father and mother and ask their blessing. I'll call them. Uh, suppose you bring us wine that we may drink a toast to our future. Of course. I'll be back in a second. Mother. Father, quickly. Did he propose? Did he? Yes. Now, listen, Mother. Have you your bracelet with the secret cup in it? Yes, I have. Have you sleeping potion in it? Of course. I filled it this morning. Good idea. Never know when we need it. Give it to me. I'll put a sleeping potion in his wine. Oh, here, here it is. Now give him plenty. Yes. We don't want any interruptions to our plans. Here he comes. Now, here we are. Uh, serve the wine immediately, Ludwig. Yes, Master. You have told him, Maliarda? Yes, Gigi. And may I hope it meets with your approval, Lord Delonia? We're indeed happy, Gigi. My blessings and congratulations. You've won a rare gift, even though she is my own daughter. But how can I give up my little girl so soon? But you don't need to. We shall be right here. You are wine, my lady. Oh, Gigi, it's silly, I know, but I want to taste the wine from your cup before I do my own. Oh, then it will indeed be the sweetest wine I've ever drunk. Your wine is as rare as the fruit, Prince Gigi. I am indeed fortunate. Here you are, dearest. To, to the loveliest woman in all the world. My goodness, it all happened so suddenly, I'm practically dizzy from the news. Yes, I share your feeling, my dear. Speaking of being dizzy, something seems to... Do, do any of you... Imagine then how I feel, Mother, to meet my prince, to fall in love, to be betrothed all in one short hour. Prince Gigi seems to know what he wants and gets it. <laughs> I don't understand what has happened to me. I can hardly believe my ears when you say you love me. The idiot. That stupid loud thinking he could ever make me happy. The sleeping potion works quickly, my dear. Better work fast, Maliata. Someone may come in. You're right. I'll get the ring from his finger. We'll put him on his couch. Hurry now, Maliata. Oh, it fits tight. Oh, wait a minute. There. Now, what's the next thing to do? Well, let's see if he told the truth. We'll make a wish. And I should think the best one would be to get him out of the way. Better get rid of everything at one time. You're right. We don't want to meet him again, ever. Of course we don't. Hurry out of the castle, Mother. Get on the terrace. What are you going to do? Come on, I'll show you. Let's get out of the castle first. Close the outside door. All right. Now then. I wish this castle and everything in it to be removed to the highest peak of Snowcap Mountain. <laughs> Ah, 
Master. Master, rouse yourself. Wake up. What? Oh, uh, Master, see what has happened. Get up quickly. What is it? Where am I? Oh, I would. I'm freezing. What? Oh, we're in snow. The castle has been moved. We're on a mountaintop. Oh, it's all too true, Master. Well, how could that be? What's happened? Master, you've been cruelly tricked. Tricked? Who am I? I can't seem to think clearly. Those three who called on you, all of them, they did it. They put a sleeping potion in your wine. No, I, I can't believe it. Master, they had it all planned out. Oh, no, not Maliarda. She is true. No, Master, she isn't. She took your ring herself. My ring? We saw her. My magic ring gone, too. What are we to do? Happy Cat, we must get down this mountainside. It's only by magic that the castle doesn't crash in the chasm below. A man couldn't keep his footing on the walls of ice. No man could, Master. But we, Tagalong and I, we can. We'll get down, Master, and we'll get your ring back, if you want us to. And once we get it back for you, you can punish them as they deserve. Tagalong and Tabby, if you can do this for me, I'll be eternally grateful. But won't you perish with the cold? Oh, no, Master. We must get help quickly, or you will, Master. Come, Tabby. I'm ready. Be careful, and good luck to you, my faithful little friends. Just by a whisker. Oh. Well, this is the girl's suite. Who well, must be. We've searched the whole castle. I'm sure it's the girl's room, all right, but what are we to do now? The door's locked. Oh, that's true. But now that we've gone this far, I don't intend to let that stop us. Isn't there the tiniest opening that you could squeeze through? Oh, no. I've looked everywhere. Listen. Listen, nothing. I smell it. It's a mouse. Well, what are you going to do? Be quiet. Be <laughs> quiet. <laughs> Not I, my little mouse. You're just what I want for my supper. Oh, no. Let me go. Tabby, an idea. Let the mouse go on one condition. He can gnaw a hole under the door of Maliotta's room. Go in and get the ring for us. If he does that, we'll let him go. Right you are. Do you hear that, little mouse? Uh -huh. I heard. I can crawl under the door without even knowing if you'll let me go. Will you do as we say? And get the ring and bring it back? Uh -huh. I promise. On your honor? Well, all right then. But no tricks. Hurry up. I must. That was lucky. Hope he doesn't think very fast. Why? Because if he does, he'll realize that we can't get to him now, and he can do what he wants to. Oh, golly, I never thought of that. Hello. You got back in a hurry. Where's the ring? I can't find it. Look on her hand, stupid. Oh, well, I did. It isn't there. I know. She's probably hidden it in her mouth. Now listen. Sneak back in. Tiptoe across her face and let your tail tickle her nose. She'll sneeze, the ring will drop out, and there you are. All right. You know, I sort of like this business. I'm off. Mm, obliging fellow, that mouse. And proud of his ancestry, too. Uh, remind me to look up his family tree, Tagalong. If he gets the ring for us, I wouldn't want to eat any of his relatives. Hmm. Oh, listen. The mouse is laughing. <laughs> Do you hear him? Gesundheit, hey, you double-crossing Watsus. Oh, I think I heard the ring fall. You have good ears. Hello there. Where's the ring? There's your ring. Sir, that girl nearly blew me off the bed when she sneezed. Now may I run? Yes, and hurry before I change my mind. Oh, by the way, are you any relation to those three blind mice? Well, I must be, or I wouldn't have run into you. Well, what is your name? Hickory. Hickory? Hickory what? Hickory Dickory Dock. The mouse that ran up the clock? No, 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 no. That was my grandfather. He got around a lot, they tell me. Well, see you later. I'm off. Confound that clown. I should catch him again to take him down a pit. Oh, no, let him go. He's done us a very valuable favor. Now to get Master Gigi off that freezing mountain. Well, how we do it? Put the ring on your finger, turn it, and make a wish. That's how he did it. Fine lot of fingers we have. Great Scott, I never thought of that. Hmm. Say, I know. Hmm? Slip it on the end of my tail. That'll work, I'm sure. All right. As the mouse said, we're off. We wish to join Master Gigi and that he and his castle be back with his mother and better in his homeland from where he started. <laughs> Oh, it's worked. There 
he is. Master G. Hello, Master little G. friend. G. Hello. I'm mighty glad to see you. And of course, you got the ring. When that castle first lifted and started flying through the air, I was pretty scared. Well, we were, too. But we wanted to join you, and at the same time, we were eager to get you off of the freezing mountain. Do you know we are now, Master? Oh, he's been too busy greeting us, Tangalon. Look, Master, recognize anything? What? Well, I'm in my own country where my mother and Betta live. Oh, how I long to see them. Where are they? Bring them to me at once. Here they are, Master. Gigi, at last you've come back to us. Yes, Mother dearest, and back to stay. Oh, Gigi, I'm so glad to see you. Better. Oh, better, you're lovely. How pretty you are. And I thought you were a plain little country girl. Which reminds me, tag along, give me the ring. Hmm? I wish that Lord and Lady Delonia with their deceitful daughter, Meliarda, shall be taken to the same mountaintop they sent me to. <laughs> oh, they'll freeze up there. Which would serve them right for what they did to our master, Gigi. Well, remind me to wish them back when I think they've been punished enough. You have a, a wishing ring, Gigi? But this is also bewildering. First you swoop down on us out of the sky, in a castle, too. Then we're greeted by a dog and cat who speak. And now you talk of a wishing ring. What does it all mean? Well, no wonder you're bewildered, Mother. I'll tell you all about it someday. Just now it's enough to say that these two faithful servants are a part of the magic ring. And they've just saved my life. And certainly, Dee Dee, they deserve a handsome reward. Which they shall have. Tag along and Tabby Cat, what is your dearest wish? Mine is to continue to serve you, Master Gigi. And yours, Tabby? The same, Master. Oh, with an occasional dish of catnip. Done. Little better, I've traveled far. I've learned much. And I know now that you are the dearest girl in all the world. The truest and the best. Will you trust your future to a man so stupid as to have doubted it for a moment? I love you very much, little lady. I've always loved you, Gigi. I... I guess I always will. Mother, put the magic ring away. For with you two to love me and to work for, I've no need for it. Tag along and Tabby, I think I smell some juicy beefsteak that's waiting for you. Well, as our friend Hickory the Mouse would say, we're, we're off. off. <laughs> And so ends the story of Gigi and the Magic Ring. Was it your favorite? If not, write to Let's Pretend and Care of This Station, and we'll try to make your favorite story wish come true. Would you like to see a broadcast of this famous program? Then write for passes. Address all mail to Let's Pretend, Care of the Columbia Broadcasting System, New York City. The cast for today included... Gigi. Kingsley Colton. The dog. Jack Grimes. The cat. Patricia Ryan. The mouse. Gwen Davies. Gigi's mother. Daisy Alden. Betta. Betty Jane Tyler. The old woman. Janet DeGore. Lord Delonia. Albert Alley. Lady Delonia. Miriam Wolfe. Meliarda. Sybil Trent. The servant Ludwig. Bill Lipton. Studio technician for Let's Pretend, Fred Hendrickson. These stories are dramatized and directed by Nyla Mack.